Alright, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about everything to do with priority queues. From where they're used to how they're implemented, and towards the end we'll also have a look at some source code. Along with all the priority queue stuff, we're also going to talk about heaps, since both topics are closely related, although not the same. So the outline for the priority queue series is we're going to start with the basics, talking about what are priority queues and why they're useful. Then we'll move on to some common operations we do on priority queues and also discuss how we can turn min priority queues into max priority queues, followed by some complexity analysis. Then we'll talk about common ways we implement priority queues. Most people think heaps are the only way we can implement a priority queue or that priority queues somehow are heaps. I want to dispel that confusion. Next, we're going to go into some great detail about how to implement the priority queue using a binary heap. There we'll look at methods of syncing and swimming nodes up and down our heap. These terms are used to, again, shuffle around elements in a binary heap. As part of the implementation explanation, I also go over how to pull and add elements. So there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Discussion and examples. This is going to be part one of five in the priority queue series. So what is a priority queue? A priority queue is an abstract data type that operates uh, similar to a normal queue, except for the fact that every element has a certain priority. So elements with a higher priority come out of the priority queue first. As a side note, I would like to remark that priority queues only support elements that are comparable, meaning that the data we insert into the priority queue must be ordered in some way, either from least to greatest or greatest to least, this is so we can assign relative priorities between elements. Okay, let's go into an example. So suppose we have all these values that we insert into our priority queue on the right, and that we impose an ordering on the numbers such that we want to order them from least to greatest. So the smaller numbers have a higher priority than the bigger ones. So they will be removed from the priority queue first. Suppose we have a, now a list of instructions. So what the poll operation means is remove the element that has the highest priority in our priority queue. So let's see how this works. So if I say poll, then I remove the element with the highest priority, which happened to be 1. Now I say add 2, so we add 2 to our priority queue, and poll, so Next, we pull the smallest element in our priority queue, and that happened to be the 2 we just added. Next, we add 4, pull the smallest, this is 3, add 5, oh, also add 9, and then pull the rest. So as I pull the rest, I'm continuously grabbing the smallest element in the priority queue. So it turns out that as we added and pulled numbers, we got an ordered sequence. This is a coincidence, actually. As we add and pull numbers from the priority queue, we do not necessarily end up getting an ordered sequence. We are only guaranteed that the next number that is removed from the priority queue is the smallest number that was currently in the priority queue. So how does the priority queue know which is the next smallest number to remove? As humans, we could see the numbers visually inside the priority queue and look and know what one was the smallest the poll operation was going to return. But fundamentally, how does the machine know this? Does it resort all the elements inside the priority queue before each poll operation? No, in fact, that would be highly ineffective. Instead, it uses what is called a heap. So the next big question then is, what is a heap? Usually I make up my own definitions, but I really like this one from Wiki. 
A heap is a tree-based data structure that satisfies the heap invariant, also called the heap property. If A is a parent node of B, then A is ordered with respect to B for all nodes A and B in the heap. What this means is the value of the parent node is always greater than or equal to the value of the child node for all nodes, or the other way around, that the value of the parent node is less than or equal to the value of the child node for all nodes. This means we end up getting two types of heaps, max heaps and min heaps. So max heaps are the one with where the parent node is always greater than its children and the min heap is the opposite. So both of the following are actually binary heaps. Binary because every node has exactly two children. And the children you cannot see are null values I have not drawn in. So why are we interested in heaps? Well, heaps form the canonical underlying data structure for priority queues. So much so that priority queues are sometimes called heaps, although this isn't technically correct since the priority queue, again, is an abstract data type, meaning it can be implemented with other data structures also. Okay, we're going to play a little game. I'm going to give you some structures, and you need to tell me whether it is a heap or not. So inspect the following structure and try to determine whether it's a heap or not. You can pause the video if you like, but I'm just going to give you a short moment here. No, we have a violation of the heap invariant in this tree, so it's not a heap. Is this structure a heap? Yes, it is a heap because it satisfies the heap invariant and it is a tree. So we often see heaps like these in what are called binomial heaps. Note that heaps aren't necessarily binary heaps, they can have any number of branches. On to our next one. So is this a valid heap? Yeah, it's a valid heap, because even though this one is strangely, strangely structured, we're free to move around the visual representation of the nodes as we please. So yeah, it's a valid heap. How about this one? No, this structure is actually not even a tree because it contains the cycles. All heaps must be trees. What about this one? Yeah, it's a heap. What about this one? Also a heap because it satisfies the heap invariant that all, all nodes are less than or equal to or greater than or equal to its parent. How about this one? No, it's not a heap because it does not satisfy the heap invariant. However, if we do change the root to be 10, then we can satisfy the heap invariant via a min heap. Or rather, sorry, a max heap. So when and where is a priority queue and a heap used? Probably one of the most popular places we see priority queues is in Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm to, to fetch uh, the next nodes we explore. Priority queues are really handy anytime you also need a behavior in which you need to dynamically fetch the next best or the next worst element. They're also used in Huffman encoding, which is often used for lossless data compression. Many best first search algorithms use priority queues in their implementation to continuously again grab the next most promising node in the graph as it's being traversed. And finally, we also see priority queues in Prim's minimum spanning tree algorithm on directed graphs. So it seems priority queues are really important, especially for graph theory algorithms, which is where we see them often. Okay, on to some 
complexity with priority queues implemented as a binary heap. So to begin with, there exists a method to construct a binary heap from an unordered array in linear time. We're not going to cover this algorithm, but it's pretty cool, and it forms the basis for the sorting algorithm heap sort. Next is polling and, or rather removing, polling or removing an element from the root of the heap. This takes logarithmic time because you need to restore the heap invariant, which can take up to logarithmic time. So peaking or seeing the value at the top of our heap can take constant time, which is really nice. Adding an element to our heap takes logarithmic time, again, because we possibly have to reshuffle the heap by bubbling up the value, as we will see in a later video. Then there are a few more operations we can do on priority queues. So removing a, an element which is not um, the root element. So the naive way of removing an element in a heap is to do a linear scan to find the item's position and then remove it. Well, the problem with this is it can be extremely slow in some situations, especially if you're removing a lot. But generally, you don't do this, and it's not a problem, which is why most implementations are just, I guess, lazy and do a, the linear scan solution. However, there does exist a way to re reduce the removing time complexity, which I will go over later in a later video in great detail in this video series, so stay tuned for that. This method uses a hash table to reduce the removing time complexity to be logarithmic which is super critical actually if you're removing as much as you are adding. Now the naive method to check containment within a heap, a binary heap, is linear. Again, you just scan through all the elements, but with the help of a hash table, we can reduce this to be a constant time, which is super neat, especially if we use the hash table implementation for the removing speed up. We get that as a free bonus. The downside, however, to using the hash table implementation is that it does require an extra linear space factor and it does add some constant overhead because you're accessing your table a lot during swaps. So I implemented a priority queue using a binary heap with the complexities I have outlined in the last two slides, which you can check out at the URL provided below. I will be creating a video going over the source code after I finish explaining everything to do with priority queues, so stay tuned for that. Um, thank you for watching, and see you in the next video. There's still a lot to cover in the topic of priority queues.